Hello my loves, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I achieve my full beat. Now, I'm literally saying I am beat to the T. I hope you can't see any of my flaws because I really did. I applied a lot. Aside from that, I really do hope you enjoyed this video. If you guys have any questions at all, please let me know down below. I really do love my comments and I love seeing them. Do I lag on responding to comments like I do responding to text messages? Most definitely. Um, if you know, you know not my best quality but i do always see them and i do make sure that i get around to it eventually other than that if you guys have any questions about the products that i'm using per usual i will always list it down below i highly suggest that you hit that little red button at the bottom let's just go ahead and dive into this tutorial this is the finishing look by the way i'm really happy with it i feel like it's pretty simple very straightforward we have a lot of matte i feel like this is a pretty beginner friendly type of eyeshadow look so if you're somebody that's trying to learn how to do eyeshadow i highly suggest that you continue watching this video because i do go in step by step on with the video roll clip like some play some tunes. Let's dive into this. This is going to be a full beat. No hesitation, full beat. I haven't done a good beat in a really long time, so I'm actually really excited about this one. Okay, going in and diving into this video. You guys already know my absolute, absolute favorite primer. Can you guess? Bobbi Brown. I've actually been adding more than I usually do just because I feel like it's going to expire soon. Need to just checking. I do feel like I need to absolutely start using my products more often than not. I saw this one video of this girl literally showing her expired makeup and what happened after she used it and I was like <gasps> go ahead and apply a nice generous amount all over because I do want this to stick all day even though I have absolutely nowhere to go. Nowhere. It doesn't really matter. I'm gonna look good for myself. I add the Prep and Prime. This is the MAC 24 hour I pretty much hype this thing up all the time, but I think when I was an artist at MAC, I used to use this during my breaks to like touch up. And I think this is like my biggest like secret. And so whenever I would do clients' makeup, they'd be like, well, they'd be like, oh yeah, it's gonna go on top of my eyes and primer, right? I was like, not exactly. I love to multi-purpose a lot of makeup and just products in general because I think that they can work more as one. Next up, brows. I got this new Precisely My Brow Pencil by Benefit. This is the mini one in the shade three. This actually didn't come with a spoolie, but I get it. It's a mini. I have a disposable spoolie. I love to go in with a very light hand just to go underneath before I really define the brow. I am really picky when it comes to brow pencils and brow products because my natural brow is thick. My natural brow color is dark. So this is generally why I am very hesitant in the color that I choose for my brows. I really don't like really warm browns. I love more of a cool tone. Then going back in with my spoolie to give it more of like a soft finish. I love to pull any product that I feel is just too much somewhere. Moving on, when you look like Oscar. Just kidding. I'm going to go ahead and start concealing my brows. I always go back to the Pro Long by MAC. I think for years, this is the only concealer I've ever used other than Tarte. I honestly feel like this is one of my favorite. This is not just saying that because I've worked for the company. Like I've used this before in the past. So this is the Prolong Concealer by MAC. The Prolongs are definitely my favorite. I actually just ran off my last bottle of the Prolong Foundation. And unfortunately, they did discontinue it, which is a really big bummer because now I can't find a foundation that just matches the coverage as well as the longevity and the color of it. I'm going to be taking like a flat kind of curved angle concealer brush. This is the MAC 24S brush. She has seen better days. Now, what I love about this brush in particular is that I can really maneuver and work with it. So I can really make it go in any direction. I am able to get my brows more defined to what I preferably would like. Carving the brows or concealing, I should say. I am going to go ahead and grab my Benefit Brow Gel. Now, this stuff is addicting, so be careful. This is my third bottle within the last year. And as you can see, I do use it every day. I actually did the soap brow at one point, and I sort of just kind of stopped for a little bit. With that, I'm actually going to be taking my foundation. So I have been combining my Studio Fix foundation. This is the shade NC25, as well as whatever leftover I had from my NC30. This, is what, well, this was the Prolong foundation, both by MAC. So grabbing that foundation and sculpting at the top. And I like to pick up the foundation from the top of my brow and just kind of work it up. This kind of helps it blend with the rest of my complexion. 
cut my brow. I so stupidly accidentally cut too much of my brow. So yeah. So with the leftover concealer that I have that I have left from concealing my brows, I literally take any kind of, well, I take more of a tapered brush, bringing down that leftover to use as a primer. Do concealer and powder as a primer. I am now going to be taking the 240S brush. This is by MAC. If you have not tried it, you need to try this. Literally any kind of makeup brand, whether that be Amazon, that's where I started. And just get a really nice fluffy brush. It can be a little dense. Now taking a pressed powder. Yes, a pressed and a loose powder. I'm going to mix these two so that way I can get more of a finish. I'm taking the MAC Studio Fix Loose Powder in the shade Light. If you ever go to a MAC store, I highly, highly suggest that you ask for a WOW in 15. This is where an artist can book an appointment for free so you can get either your eyes, your brows, or your foundation done. Now, quite frankly, some of these artists may be pissed for me saying this, me included. I would have been really agitated if I would have promoted it. But I do feel like it's very beneficial if you're somebody that needs to visually see something. Now that I have my eyes prepped, I'm going to go ahead and grab my MAC Connect in color. Now, I know I have a lot of MAC products. I did work for the brand, so obviously that's that's just inevitable. You don't need this palette to complete this look. You can literally use any brand that you have. I'm just going to be using this for this example because it's just going to make more sense. So these are more of the neutral colors. I tend to gravitate towards these three shades right here. They kind of have a dull blush tone matte shadow, then transitioning into a warmer brown, and then a really soft, warm, kind of chocolatey brown. Wedge Uninterrupted and Sonic Chocolate. If you don't have this last one called Sonic Chocolate, just get Swiss Chocolate or find a color like it. Going in with that first shade, I'm going to be taking cozy gray I am obsessed with the Morphe brushes. When it comes to an eyeshadow brush, Morphe by all, like hands down, has the best brushes. When it comes to face brushes like powders, blushes, and contours, I always go back to MAC or Amazon. I just, I, they just never miss. So this is the Morphe M433 brush. As you can see, it's fluffy. So taking that, I'm going to go ahead and apply it into my outer third, blending it into my crease. Again, applying it. So I love to tap at the outer third as my base. And then I just start going in small circular motions, working that out. Going in with the same exact brush, but I'm going to be using the other one because I do have two. I'm obsessed. I'm going to be going in with that second shade. As I said, the shade is uninterrupted. It's like a mustardy brown. Really working that only in my outer third, blending it into my crease, not letting it go past the second part of my eye. And I'm really pushing it right there where that crease is, where the top of my eyeball is. Don't be shy with your pigments, but of course don't add too much. If you end up adding too much, just add a translucent powder to take away from it. That or a lighter shade. If you feel that you lose the first shade that you had, just go in with your first shade and build upon it. We are going to go ahead and blend in our depth shade, which is going to be the third shade, which is going to be the darker shade. I like to go in and switch with alternating a more dense, more precise brush. And then I like going in with more of a fluffier brush. For this, I'm actually just going to be using one brush. I don't really want to overcomplicate it. This is the MAC 221S brush. And I am going to go in with that darker shade right here as well, which is similar to a shade called Embark by MAC. Now, the reason why I'm not necessarily going too much in an angle is because I'm going to be adding an eyeliner. This look that I am showing you has been my go-to look for the past few days now. And you're almost creating like a C shape. I dab and then I start blending. Should look something like this. So now here's my little tip. I take my face powder. Generally the face powder that I use to brighten and lighten as the shadow to brighten up or give me that cut crease illusion. I'm going to be taking a flat round tip brush. This is the Morphe R42 brush. I like grabbing a little bit from my compact. And what I will do is I will almost mimic what I would do if I was cutting my crease with concealer. But instead of cutting it with concealer, I'm doing it with powder. It's more of a soft, a soft cut crease. And for some reason, when I would work at the store, this was like the number one compliment that I would always get if I did this look at, at work was like, how did you do like that soft inner part? This is how I do it. Not everybody does it the same way, but taking the Ashley Strong, these are the cake liners. I am obsessed with cake liners. I prefer them over regular eyeliner. They're taking a flat angled brush. This is the MAC 263. No. Oh, okay. I do my eyeliner different, so do eyeliner however you want. So believe it or not, I do my eyeliner straight, and this is mainly because of my eye shape. Like so, doing the other eye. I have to do it this way so my eyes appear bigger. Gives me like a baby doll kind of feel, if that makes sense. Perfect. Now, from there, moving on to eyelashes. 
going to go off camera and put them on. Moving on to complexion, I'm really going to pack it on. I'm going to be taking the MAC 27S brush. I love this because it's a duo side. It's like a foundation and a powder. Picking up some product, I'm going to start applying it onto my face. Now, I love to apply my foundation as if my face is a canvas and I'm doing small but long strokes pushing in the product. So just applying. Now, I do have texture. We can't get rid of texture. All of the acne. I have these like icicle scars now and quite frankly I used to get really insecure about it but because it's already been on my face for so long and I think I've just developed loving myself for the way that I look it doesn't bother me anymore which is kind of cool but if somebody makes fun of me I will cry so I'm not getting rid of my texture but I'm trying to get rid of the color I'm gonna let it dry you can see now with that i'm gonna let that sit for a second now working on contour i still am on the hunt for a really good contour i honestly would love the opportunities the made by mitchell the curve cases very lightly go in with a beauty puff gently pushing in the product now obviously i don't want to pick up any foundation it is dry but i need it to make sure i need to make sure that it sticks gonna be mixing so i'm gonna be taking nw34 the studio fix concealer as my quote-unquote contour so now I'm going in with a angled brush. This is the 160S brush by MAC. I'm going to go ahead and just start lightly dabbing. Only focusing it right there mainly. Only because I know that I'm going to be adding blush. And I know I'm going to lose it. So dabbing it so I don't ruin anything. But I'm going to be adding that blush. So I am going to look overly like bronzed. Trust you will see it come together. I actually used to really love my nose and then I think just recently I started to dislike it only because I felt like my nose is just too flat and like my Lola my grandmother always says that I have her nose and so I was like not really nice so so if you feel like you went too dark that is okay go back in with your foundation I know like Jordan Jordan tends to really bronze really heavily and it looks amazing but she has a different structure I'm having to go in so that I can take away some of that tone now believe it or not it is going to be taken away once I add other elements like my powder and my concealer. Taking the Cheer Up MAC Low Play Blush. I'm going to be taking my finger and placing this on top of the bronzer slash contour. So as you can see, as I'm adding these other elements, I'm going to be under blushing. Per. I think applying creams and liquids with your finger sometimes can be more beneficial. Now you might be like, Maddie, what the hell are you doing? Hold on. We're going to get there. This, we are now going to go ahead and buy some concealer. I like to mix the Pro Long. Yeah, I know. For my MAC artists, don't come for me. I love mixing the MAC Pro Long Concealer as well as the Studio Finish MAC Concealer in the it shade MC25 and mixing those. Um, Someone out there is going to come for me because they're going to be like, girl, that is really thick. For some odd reason, it works for me. I don't know why. I think as an artist, I don't like when others try to push upon their own quote unquote expertise. So applying it right there. I love mixing them. But yes, as I was saying, I really don't like when people try to push what they do with their makeup. Everyone has a different style of makeup. If you see somebody that's just doing their makeup differently from how you do it, leave them alone. Leave them alone. Like, I know for a fact when I was working at my previous jobs, there's this one girl who obviously never wore primer for her foundation. She just said she didn't like it, and I was like, cool. Like, her. Your makeup looks great. I would despise when other girls would pretty much shit on her because she didn't use primer. They'd be like, oh, that's so bad for your skin. Like just she's living let her be you know I, I don't know what it is when people try to butt in but it's just ugh, let it be hold on i'm pretty much dabbing and going underneath going back and forth so that i can blend but i'm not directly putting the concealer there okay dabbing underneath the eye pushing that leftover product okay letting that sit for a second while i found myself out I'm gonna be going back in with my little beauty puff and just pushing in so adding me adding all of these other elements is going to affect my overall finishing look believe it or not cute it's given i wish i could do a beat like this all the time but i just can't now going in with my broken where's the mirror <laughs> Where's the second part? Yeah, she's seen better days. This is the MAC Studio Fix powder in the shape MC30. Um, I'm going to go ahead and apply it with a big, fat, fluffy brush. Pushing in all of that product. Purr, purr, purr. Get that down to my neck. Going back in with that fluffy brush. I'm going to be using a loose powder before I set it with my pressed powder. That fluffy brush. Going to go back in with that Studio Fix. 
pushing that in. I really love cream. This is how I do it. You don't have to do it how I do it. I'm really only setting and baking where I naturally crease. Here's my little trick. Take your pressed powder, your loose powder, mix them, and bake. Ah, ah. Ah! <laughs> I like, you weirdo. What the hell am I watching? I'm having a little Ari moment. Fun fact, when I was in middle school, I actually thought I was Ariana Grande. No, thought I was Cat Valentine. You don't talk about it. Well, I wasn't allowed to use any kind of dye. So I went online and I told my mom, like, hey, there's like some things where you can like dye your hair with Kool-Aid. Yeah. Well, I dyed my hair with powder juice. Like the powder juice. Probably not my brightest moments, but okay we're here now okay that will do it and a little bit of the dior highlight i do realize this is probably not the best lip considering that it's super light but i love it taking the lip line the lip liner oak and then blankety the lipstick it's cream lipstick i know going back and forth and then taking my all-time favorite this is the see-through lip gloss i'm just gonna go ahead and push any leftover powder done so pause because this is low-key eating also look at my nails my girl Kelis did them if you guys live in the south bay area she has a little studio slash salon in torrance i will go ahead and link for instagram in my bio at karmic nails get your nails did by Kelis. like look at these if you saw i posted it on my community post hope that you guys enjoyed this video as much as i did making it you guys already know what to do hit that red subscribe button at the bottom go ahead and like this video and let me know what else you would like to see within the coming weeks you already know i have new content upon us i probably would do a different video with reviewing some products because i have been taking some feedback from most of you guys so stay tuned for that other than that i hope that you guys have a wonderful rest of your day i will see you guys next time love ya bye